The way a distortion analyzer works is you set a set level on the meter and then you tune a tank circuit to where it eliminates all the fundamental frequency. And the only thing left then is the harmonic content and it measures the harmonic content. If I had a pure sine wave there would be no harmonic content and we'd measure zero. Now with 10 millivolts in we're getting 1.2 volts out of the amplifier and we're reading just about 4.3 percent distortion. I've reset the microphone input amplitude to 20 millivolts and remeasure the distortion and we have about 7.6 percent. With the 7.6 percent distortion we also are getting about 2.3 volts out of the amplifier compared to the 1.2. So that makes sense. If we double the input, we should get double the output. Well, I don't quite have double the output, and I have more distortion. What we'll do next is take a look and see what happens if I take and change and put the new modification in. We're going to test a microphone amplifier modification. Right now we have 20 millivolts of signal of 1 kilohertz going into the modulator connected into the mic input just directly and we see the sideband generated here here's our carrier down here here's the second harmonic of the modulation frequency we'll adjust that over to the center again and here's the third harmonic Right now the second harmonic is down about minus 28 dB from the sideband. Let's change the input voltage to 10 millivolts and see what happens. If you notice the carrier dropped down about 3 dB which is what it should, probably should. I, put half the voltage in so I get getting half of the amplitude of the carrier out or 3 dB anyway, 3 dB less and now we are down about 10, 20, 30 about 38, 37, 38 dB down so it definitely made a difference by reducing the input amplitude but remember, in order to get our maximum power out, we're going to have to have maximum voltage into that amplifier. Because the more voltage we put into it, until we saturate it out, the rest of the circuitry anyway, the more power we get out in our side bed. One other thing we need to look at is, while we're looking at the different levels of the harmonic spur, is we actually need to read the, the voltage coming out of the transceiver so that we make sure that uh, we end up with about the same drive level out when we're done. With the 10 millivolts input I was getting 1.04 volts out at 14 megahertz across 50 ohm resistor on the output of the transceiver. With 20 millivolts, I was getting 1.7 volts out. So we'll write those numbers down and we'll look at those after we make the mic modification to make sure we're somewhere in the same ballpark when we're through. I've made the modification which consists of changing out the collector 2.2K to a 1K and the emitter 2.2K to a 390 ohm. This is from Jim Corp. Uh, he did some computer modeling of it. And what I like about it right away is it gave me a little more mic gain. So instead, with 10 millivolts input, before I had 1.04 volts out, now I have 2 volts. And then when I go to 20 millivolts input, I get 2.4 volts out instead of 1.7. So I think that may help. And also if we look at this, this is with 10 millivolts. 
the harmonic now, second harmonic of the modulation is now about 45 dB down compared to before. It was about minus 37 at 10. So let's go ahead and bump it up to 20 millivolts input. And one thing that I see that is different now the third harmonic content is equal to the second harmonic content and 10, 20, 30, 40 still down 40 dB about 42 dB down so it seems to be a very worthwhile addition to decrease that harmonic content we can go on up but let's go ahead and go to 40 millivolts And now I, I'm sitting here, it's 10, 20, 30, it's still 34, 35 dB down. And I now have 2.5 volts out of the mic amp. So I think I'm going to leave that modification in for right now anyway.